How's it going, everyone? Thanks for coming out. Um, because this is kind of an intimate crowd, I would like to, instead of telling you about some of my accolades and that kind of thing, I would like to tell you a bit more intimate things about me and kind of my method for doing what I do and why I do it. Um, and it's something that I don't normally tell people. Uh, I have a superiority complex. <laughs> I am pretty good with impulse control. And I have a deep sense of inferiority. And I don't normally tell people this, um, but I think that it's important because it drives a lot of what I do. And, and by having a superiority complex, I mean that when I try something new, when I try a new sport, if I'm not immediately good at it, I get really pissed off. Um, and this has been something that's been with me my whole life. If I'm not good at something immediately or the best at it immediately, um, I get really down on myself. And that's kind of where like my deep sense of inferiority comes, comes from. Um, because a lot of the time when I'm doing things that I'm perceived being pretty good at, like surfing or skateboarding or movie ma making, things that I've dedicated my life to, a lot of the thoughts going through my mind are, um, Kyle, you're not good enough. Um, Kyle, you're not as good as this other person. Um, and you, why did you choose doing this? You shouldn't do this. Um, and those are thoughts that go through my mind on a very regular basis, doing things that the public perceives me as being very good at. And then the third is that I have pretty good impulse control. And I think that that is what has kind of driven what uh, has been perceived as success, is I, I'm very good at, at setting a goal for myself and, uh, and then following through. So I, for example, um, I, I broke my arm uh, this last month skateboarding, and um, I've been trying to be really health healthy. So I told myself that I wasn't going to do any drinking, um, you know, during this next period. And I, I've never really had a problem with drinking, but it's just you know, socially that kind of thing. It's obviously easy. <laughs> My name's Kyle, and I've, <laughs> I've <laughs> yeah. Thanks for all coming out tonight. I appreciate it. Um, so to accomplish this goal, um, I said. Um, Kyle, uh, you need to, you're not going to drink any alcohol, and if you do, you're going to write a check, and I actually wrote out this check, and the check is for $100, and it's f to the George W. Bush Appreciation Library. <laughs> and if I, and if I break this promise, I need to send off this check. Um, and, um... It's it's how I live my life, really. It's how it's how it's my method for um, filmmaking. It's my method for surfing, um, and it's it's you know I'm I'm proud of my impulse control. I'm not proud of a few of the other things, um, but I think that it's it's important um, in the sense that lots of times you just see the end product of of you know, a movie that I make or, or something like that, but you don't get to actually see that the process that goes on um, underneath it all. So um, that's something that's just, that's the reason I want to talk about it is just because it's been something that's very, very present uh, in my life. And it was really interesting because I've always known that about myself, but um, I actually became much more okay with it um, when a, a friend of mine sent me a New York Times article recently, and it's called What Drives Success. And it was exactly those three uh, personality traits, uh, was that you have a superiority complex, you have a good impulse control, and you have a deep sense of inferiority. And that's, um, it's just really interesting to me that, that those were, were uh, that those were things that came up um, and and that's what I want to talk about <laughs> is that and and um, yeah so well who I mean who well yeah I mean I didn't want that I didn't want that to, I feel like that came out wrong like <laughs> so anyone who doesn't have a superiority complex is going to right but um, I, I think that so 
what I do um, on a kind of external level is I surf professionally and I started a documentary series called Surfing for Change where we travel around the world to different surfing destinations and we cover social or environmental issues. Um, and we kind of tell very bold stories or you know, pick on companies like Monsanto and we do it through the lens of surfing. Um, and I'm gonna tie each one of those things back to, to what I why I do so so surfing I feel like was always just one of those things that I grew up around the ocean you don't really you know you're, you're attracted to it I always thought that you know being able to do something where there's the possibility of being eaten by a large animal is always present it's not like it's not like Roger Federer could potentially be like mauled by a bear while he's out on the tennis court or something right? I always thought that was kind of cool um, so that I mean, I was I was always uh, drawn to surfing, and all my friends did it. So we got out there, and and we would just surf all day. It was very it's a very social thing. Um, and then the the way that I got into video is that my family uh, is has a background in video. My dad runs Impact Productions, which is a local media company around town. So I was constantly just in that world of of making movies, and I've always been really interested in storytelling. Um, so I was able to kind of combine those passions um, as well as that I, I think that the reason that I'm so passionate about telling stories about how the surf world affects us is because I think that right now surf culture is very backwards in the sense that, um, you know, we... we tout that Bali is a surf paradise when really it's drowning in trash because of so many surfers and this industrialization of it happening. I think that was something that was a really interesting story that wasn't really being told. It's it's just the surf world is this for, it's, you know, you sell a dream. That's that's essentially what we do as, as professional surfers. We sell a dream and the product that comes along with that dream. Um, but if you're not careful, it can kind of perpetuate mindless consumerism and lead to a lot of the really big issues that we're having now um, that you know the the two main the two main products we use every day the wetsuit and the surfboard the wetsuits made out of petroleum based synthetics and the surfboard is basically made out of styrofoam unless you're doing an awesome surfboard like that um, so those that was kind of what has uh, what got me into this whole gig of doing the Surfing for Change videos. You guys can check them out online. Um, but, you know, that that isn't interesting for me to talk, tell you guys about what I do. But what was much more interesting is that kind of you guys can know that that there is always that internal struggle whenever you, know, you guys see a new movie that I come out with, um, a new Surfing for Change documentary that seems like we're having a really good time and we're all having you know fun and I say my lines and hey, okay, over here is the Monsanto march when really I tried to say that line nine times before and could not get it right and was like cussing and pissed off and then like put on a happy face to go do it. But that's just the, it's the, it's the, the story behind the story of um, a lot of what goes on. Um, so that is uh, my self-revealing kind of awkward speech about uh, <laughs> about what I do and, and why I do it and my method for going through how I do it. So thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll ask the first question. Sure. So we're at Event Santa Cruz. It's an entrepreneurial you know, event. And I want to know how surfers support themselves. I know, I mean, that's... I just I'm amazed when I see like the some of the Mavericks surfers and like you know there's not a lot of money that they're getting for supporting that. So how do you support yourself? You know I know you're making these movies and surfing, but I mean do those pay the bills for you? Um, so I'm lucky enough to have some really great surf sponsors who I'm very happy to promote their clothing as I'm out there. So I surf for Patagonia, Cliff Bar, and Sector Nine skateboards, and um, they pay me some money to. Uh, pay my rent and make the movies and make all that happen. In addition, as you know, m making movies uh, has a lot of external expenses, so sometimes we'll write grants to, to make the movies happen, um, and then we kind of piece it together um, with those, with all of that, but um, yeah, it's a it's an interesting industry for sure because, uh, I mean, one thing that, that's, I'll, I'll give, give Patagonia a pretty cool little plug is that uh, the, so the 
traditionally the surf industry kind of uses athletes for their best few years as soon as they're having a bad year um it's very likely for an athlete to get cut they go from having basically their whole salary how they pay their rent their food to having nothing and many times very few skills to then go out in the world and get jobs um and it's kind of a sad behind the scenes story of of you know you'll see a guy who was on the cover of surfer magazine in the 80s and now he's you know homeless on the street you know and that's a pretty common story that isn't talked about very often um and patagonia's founder yvonne chenard and the whole surf program over there really understood that and they really didn't want their program to be about that. So um, they are now starting an ambassador program where they support us to go out into the world and learn skills that we're passionate about in addition to surfing. So for example, like there's a Patagonia ambassador who's really into green building and they're now going out to support him to be able to um, get opportunities to learn building skills. For me, it's like video editing, um, and that kind of thing. So they paid for me to get an account at lynda.com, which is like, it's like 400 bucks a year. And there are all these video tutorials of how to learn new editing skills and that kind of thing. So that is one of the reasons that uh, I feel very proud and, and very pr privileged to, to surf for a company like Patagonia. Um, it, and it's, it is, it's, it's genuine because I've always also prided myself and prided the Surfing for Change videos on being bold and just saying what needs to be said because we really don't need any more like fair weathered activists out there and it was really important for me to have a company where when I'm calling out a specific company like Monsanto or Bank of America in a video and saying that these guys are doing something that is destroying a community I really it's really important for me to have my sponsors be behind me as I'm out doing that and sometimes it's very very uncomfortable um, doing that but it was really cool that if you guys check out the, the new big issue of Surfer Magazine, Patagonia did a two-page spread of me and our new video um, on GMOs in Hawaii. So I was pretty excited to see that. 